So, Blight Ranger. I really don't know where to start with the exotic, as it's both interesting and lackluster. It's interesting as it allows Archontis to not only reflect block damage back to targets, but it does it with escalating damage as the forefront of its design. However, it's lackluster as it requires this to be achieved only in a super form, and this requires the user to dedicate a build solely for getting your super up fast. Now, I have done a Raiju's Harness build in the past with the idea of using it to support team members and get risky revives in inking content. So, with that idea, or just that, I thought I'll implement that same idea for Blight Ranger, but change up a few things here and there. The results are interesting as you get a build dedicated to making sure your team is fully armed and ready, have a number of elemental energy being given back, able to wipe out areas with AoE effects, and most importantly, be able to produce tons of orbs. Now, it's good on paper and it's effective, but it has a few snags that unfortunately make the exotic debatable to use. Let's look into that together. To start, you're going to want to have flow state where defeating your targets make you amplified. While amplified, your dodges recharge faster, you're more resistant while dodging, and reload speed is greatly increased. Then you want tempest strike where sliding and using your mini causes a vertical arc wave to be released. Now, there is not much good choices to pick here unfortunately, so we have to make do with what we got. At best, both stats will help the build make the user more mobile or resistant to oncoming damage while both in super normal states. We don't have anything that is unique compared to what the Warlock and Titans have, so like I said, we have to make do with what the fragments can make up. So to make up what the aspects fail to help us with, the fragments recover the losses, such as Spark of Beacons allows our arc weapons to blind targets while amplified, Spark of Resistance, which provides users with a 40% damage reduction while surrounded, Spark of Shock, where arc grenades will jolt, and Spark of Ions, which allows us to get more ion traces when defeating joint targets. Out of all these fragments, you're going to want to have Spark of Resistance and Ions the most, as these will be triggering constantly while using our grenades. As the idea of the build is to become a major support player while in your super, in and out, you're going to want to rely on wells and iron traces to heavily carry this build far and wide. This is easily achieved when using your elemental ordnance, powerful wells, and seeking wells to constantly produce the required energy to sustain both you and your teams. I also recommend you keep the Spark of Beacons mod on you at all times if you intend to use it with an arc grenade launcher, as if used with a waveframe, for example. You can do a lot of damage when amplified and active. For the mods and stats section, Resilience, Discipline and Intellect are going to be the main stats to invest in, with Intellect being the main priority stat. A base minimum of 70 to 100 is the go-to for Resilience and Discipline, but Intellect can stay at 40 to 50 as long as you use the Frontal Wisdom mod. This one mod is going to be key with getting our super up quickly with little effort, as it's going to give you a plus 50 to the common Intellect stat. With how often we'll get an elemental world and how I'm not using mods such as Ashes to Assets or Hands On to further speed up this area, this should make your lives a lot less panicky in terms of what mods are required. We will, however, be using the Bad Juju for a super regen speed upon kills and also the Power Preservation mod along with the Connect Siphon mod. Connect Siphon is going to be working with Bad Juju a lot and this will help with building up super on a passive level for the user while Power Preservation is going to make this build produce a ton of orbs more than normal. Think pre-Ursus for Titans, but now for the Hunters, although less benefits involved. I recommend you highly add on this, since Blight Ranger's whole design requires users to block and reflect damage back to targets, and while doing this, you'll also be creating orbs of power anyway. Adding this onto it and finding a nice group of enemies to hit you with this can allow you to get back 50% of your teammate's super when done correctly. Lastly, you then want to have the Luke and Finisher mod and the Weak and Clear mod as well. Both of these are seasonal and of course will be gone by the end of the season, but while they are still here, you can make good use of them with the build as it will directly lead to supporting your team one way or another. After the season ends, you could add on the Distribution and Perpetration mods for the ability energy return back to you, or the Bulwark Finisher mod which will give you an overshield and finisher, but this will require you to give one fourth your super. Now, for the weapons being used, this should accommodate the playstyle of the build as best as possible. Bad Juju is a good pick as anything super related for builds always tend to rely on Bad Juju for this area. 
Now, string curse is a pretty great perk when you get the ball of it going, as the super energy return and damage is reliable in both endgame and normal content. The issue though is retaining that damage in endgame as it's not a long duration, and different enemy types and GMs can make all this hard work to do. Of course, this isn't a major issue as Funnel Wisdom can help with kickstarting the build, and Bad Juju with Connect Siphon together can easily stitch up the missing gap that Bad Juju may produce. Of course, if you want to use Elemental Siphon mods instead and speed up how much orbs of power you can make, then doing this practice is also viable as long as you're using the Arc Wave Frame instead, such as the Dead Messenger or Forbearance. I went with Forbearance as I have a crafted version with Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, and another with Unrelenting and Chain Reaction, which is both the go-to role for the weapon as a whole. Just using the weapon alone can make the build a lot more bearable in harder content, as the damage is good, its chain reaction effect can damage or outright kill most adds caught up within it, and the weak and clear mod makes taking down tougher enemies a lot more easier and less time consuming. On top of that, the spark of beacons fragments once activated will allow a weapon to blind those upon getting a kill, so not only does the weapon work really well with the subclass and exotic being used, but it also allows us to shut down near everything as long as we are amplified. This can be replicated with Dead Messenger if you want to cover more ground, but if you have the four bearings available, then pairing it with the current build is probably the best option to go with. So to start, let's go with the pros of the build, and that is the ability to create auto power like nothing, and shut down areas with your arsenal or AoE items. With thanks to R3.0, it has brought life back to a subclass that has long been avoided for use in PvE. The jaw mechanic allows players to tag mobile targets once with a single grenade, and take out a large group of adds in a single throw, while also granting us the ability to blind others while there. This, combined with how we use our super, allows us to easily utilize everything we have and feed back energy to our allies through orbs of power, wells and ion traces. But talking about super, thanks to the Blight Ranger's effect, we can reflect damage back to targets and even outright kill them if we have enough firepower being thrown at us. This has been very effective in missions such as GM Corrupted, in the Ogre Room or the Boss Room, with the amount of things being chucked at you, and the orbs you make will definitely allow you to chain your supers back to back effectively. Effectively, the build is great in heavily condensed areas where you know it's going to be a long fight, but sadly, that's as far as the build will go. The build is good, but the exotic holds the build back as the reflected damage done isn't enough in terms of doing enough damage against most targets. To make it work, you really need to have a lot of firepower being aimed at you, or else the damage being done by a drag, for example, is useless. This holds the build back as you can only use it in a handful of content, and even then there are better choices to use. It's fun to use when playing with your friends as it fills in the needed role, and its support application is good for covering you until your super is ready. However, it's not a meta setup, and I don't see this ever being a meta setup unless Bungie seriously updates how much damage Blight Ranger does on a whole, something I just don't see them doing anytime soon. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.